now we've reached probably the most important part of practice like a pro. We're on the putting green. And I'll tell you what, Doug, this is probably the most simple stroke in golf because it is the smallest, but yet it's the most difficult to do under pressure. And there really are no fundamentals that we can talk about in putting because everybody has a different stroke. It's kind of like your signature. But there's one thing that all great putters have, and that's a great attitude. Yeah, you have to decide you're going to fall in love with putting and enjoy getting on the greens. And I think it begins as soon as you hit your ball on the greens that you have a choice. You can either start dreading putting or hating it or fearing it, or you can start really embracing it and falling in love with the idea of getting the putt now and show off how good you are. And it's a game within the game, and it's, it's a big, big part of the game. And what's fascinating about it is this is where you make your money. This is where you know you beat your buddies. This is where you, you ultimately lower your score. And there's no question, the better you get with your pitching, the closer you hit it, the easier it is to putt. But at some point, you have to be able to love putting. Yeah, exactly. And, and the th other thing about putting that's, that's so unique is uh, the, the things it'll do to your mind. If you start trying to make a putt or, you know, when you feel like you need to make one, it seems like we get in our own way and we get out of our process. Yeah, and I think that's a big part of the challenge that everyone says, including us, that it's real important. But when you're actually doing it, you have to have an attitude of indifference or feeling like you don't care and it doesn't matter. I'm always working with players on getting rid of thought patterns like you have to make this one, you need to make this one, you're supposed to make this one, this one's really important. You gotta get rid of all of that and learn to treat all of your putts the same. And we do that in general by putting a routine together physically and mentally that gets you into your target and being able to do a process over and over. And the process always begins by trusting your first instinct on reading the green mm -hmm. rather than working like crazy and over reading it, which a lot of people do when they have doubt and fear in them. And after you've read it, you want to see that ball going in the hole. And I always tell players, do not step up to that ball and do your routine over the ball until it's clear in your mind that that ball is going in the hole. And I try not to tell people what it means to be into the target other than it's out there. And I try not to tell people what it means to see the ball going in the hole. I've heard things such as, I see the ball go in the hole and I actually see the ball roll over end over end. I've seen some players who will say what they see is a colored ball or a black and black ball. I've seen some people who say they just see a really thin line. Some people see a wide line. Some people see a trough. Some people feel it's like a laser burn into the grass. And some people tell me they just see the first few feet and the last few feet of the putt. It doesn't really matter to the brain as long as the brain is seeing the ball go in the hole. And any of those things means the ball is going in the hole uh, to some people's minds. And whatever you decide is clear to you, I'm very happy with you doing. And the other thing I see a lot of amateurs make and we hear TV commentators talk about is, oh, he's just trying to lag this one close from a, a long distance putt. And I think that's, that's a poison thought to have. Well. What I've been teaching for years, because it's the only thing that makes any sense, is if you're on the putting green, look to see the ball going in the hole. I mean, I, I always use the example, if Michael Jordan was playing basketball, and every time he shot from outside of eight feet, he told people he was just trying to hit the backboard, we'd say, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. But golfers have that attitude a lot. Yeah. And I just say, hey, if we're gonna practice, let's practice putting the ball in the hole. And the idea is we wanna see it go in the hole, and then we're just gonna go through our routine with an attitude of indifference, totally unconcerned with results, because we've already seen it go in the hole. And that's how we get out of trying or getting careful when it's time to stroke it. Yeah, because I, when I've putted my best, I know at times it's, it's almost a careless feeling. It's, a, it's just a carefree, I'm just gonna do what I do in my practice by doing the games and just let it happen. Yeah, and we love to play the game on the putting green where we're pretending we're in our next tournament, coming down the stretch with a chance to win or shoot a really good number. And when we're in the tournament, we like to pretend we're back on our favorite putting green, just doing our routine. Yeah, exactly. And, and the only thing that all great putters have is they love to putt, because you got to do it every hole. You have to, and, it's, and that's why anybody who gets good 
is going to learn to love to putt because it's it's where you have to finish. Okay, Tom, we're here on the putting green, and this is the smallest movement in golf, yet mm -hmm. it causes the most anxious moments no among question. players. No question. And how do we conquer that? Well, I think you you really need to to get into the target, and you need to get out of mechanics. Right. Uh, you know, obviously, we have to work on our mechanics when we're when we're trying to, to get a good stroke and, and there's a time to train and, and work on that and that's on the putting green but some of the practice time on the putting green has to be trying to recreate playing golf exactly. and uh, you know I think a lot of times people spend too much time working on their stroke on the putting green and they don't spend enough time actually trying to make the putt or trying to get a feel for for how the putt goes so at some point in time throughout your practice session while you're on the putting green you know get out of the mechanics and get into you know the target a little right. bit get into trying to make the putt and get into trying to read the putt and and that's as simple as just going back and saying all right this is a golf this is a putt like I would have on the on the course or in the tournament right. and you know try to recreate the same type of uh, thought processes that you would have on that instead of thinking about my mechanics you know is my grip right is my path right and all that stuff all of a sudden all I'm trying to do here at least in this part of the practice session is try to make the putt exactly and we include some uh, drills and games in this that you know the pressure builds like the clock drill where you go around and right. you've got a putt that you really need to make yeah but you have to have that balance act where you've got to not care if you miss. Well, exactly, and, and you know, the more of those games that you can play, especially if you're competing against somebody, right. you know, where you've got to do it, or even if you're competing against yourself, I mean, anything that creates that competition that makes it more important than just out there goofing around on the putting green right. is, is what we were trying to do, right. because that's what's going to happen on the golf course. At some point in time, you're going to have a putt that's going to mean something. Whether it, you know it's for a two dollar NASA or for it's for the U.S. Open, it's going to mean a little more than your normal putt, and you want to have practice that as best you can. You know it's difficult to simulate that kind of pressure. You can't simulate the U.S. Open pressure until you get into U.S. Open, but the closer you can come to creating that kind of pressure is is going to help you in the long run. And and you know when when over the course of your career, I, uh, Rotella calls it almost a carefree attitude mm -hmm. when you're putting. Have you found that's when you putt your best? No question. Yeah. No question. When you're when all it is is just thinking about rhythm, yeah. you know, for me, that, that's what I think about the most. Uh, you know, I've worked on my routine, I've practiced my routine, so I don't even have to think about that. But the, the easier that I have time of trying to get the good rhythm and the good, uh, you know, pace to my stroke, mm -hmm. that's where I play my best, where I'm not into mechanics, I'm not worried about the, the, the club face rotating or lack of rotating or not worried about the path, not worried about the grip pressure, right. not worried about anything other than how hard do I need to hit it to make it go the right distance. Exactly. All right, now we've got about a uh, 20 footer here. 20, 20, 25 feet. 25 feet. Now talk us through your routine and I want to stress that this routine you're going to watch him do is no different than if he had a putt this week to win right. a golf tournament. Yeah, I, I don't really think about this. I've already done all the thinking, so I know exactly what it is. But, you know, if under under pressure, I'm going to come up and I'm going to take a couple of practice strokes. Then I'm going to step up to the ball. I'm going to look a couple of times, and then I'm going to go. And right after the last look, I won't say I'm immediately right after, but I don't spend a lot of time getting that putter away from the ball after I look at the hole the last time because I want to have it that fresh in my mind is to, you know, I look there, that's what I see, and then I don't want to stand over the thing and get, get locked in and get tense, and, and uh, so do that. All right, so, talk us through it. I'll move my shadow here because you won't have a shadow. You know, obviously got a little left to right break. I've already read the putt. I know this thing's going to break a, you know, a foot and a half or two feet to the right and uh, know the speed pretty well. So I'm going to set up up here. Again, I'm always looking at the target, you know, paying attention to that before I come back. And then, you know, I'm trying to simulate the stroke, look at the target again, simulate the stroke, and then come in here. And then basically it's just, you know, look at the hole and go. Oh, man, don't you hate it when you leave it dead in the heart short. Okay, well, let's talk us through your thought process okay. and, um, and what you're doing. I kind of... Immediately when I'm walking up to green, I'm already starting to line to figure out the rules of the of the putt. I I can see how the grass lays, how the how the slope is, and I'm going to kind of know how it breaks. So what you what I do, I have we all have our ball marked in a certain way. A lot of guys used to 
put a line all the way through here, but Faxon, I think, has gotten Titleist to put a line there already, so we don't really need to color that in. And what a lot of us will do, we'll set the line on what we feel is the break. So I'll get up to, um, this is a left to right break, so I'll get the line kind of going maybe to the left edge. And what I'll do is I'll go over the other side of the hole and make sure that that break is still doing the same thing. And then I, when I get around behind it, my routine is I'm not real, I don't go through a lot of, uh, a lot of motions that are, are very pre-trained. I try to stay free with the putter. I try to stay loose with the putter. So what I'll do is I'll think of that line that's a left edge putt in my mind, in my mind's eye, I'm going to walk down that line to the hole from behind the hole. I'm going to walk into the putt. And the lines on our putt are very important. In my case, the two bar blade, I have two bars. That's going to, what's that going to do is going to help me set those bars along the break of the, of the putt. So I'll set those both on the left edge. And what I do is I make sure that the blade is square. This line is square to this line, which is obviously on the line of the break. And then I don't think again about anything technical. All I do is move that putter through. Go. And then from then on in, I just go ahead and move and go. Yeah. Positive attitude, yeah. trust me when I tell you, is the number one key to good putting. That's and why loving I, that's, the putt. That's and why loving the putt. Loving the putt. There's Dr. Bob. Yeah. Well, we have a couple of games that what we've done is broken them down into long putting games and some short putting games because you got to have good feel and touch for the long putts, and then you, you need to be able to knock those short putts in. And with the, all of the games we're going to show you, it's so important that you practice the visualization of seeing the ball go in the hole, that you practice your entire routine, and if there's any distraction, you're going to walk away and start over because the routine is designed so that we can predict before we get on the golf course where our mind is going to be, what our physical routine is going to be, and it's like clockwork. I mean, someone could take a video of you on the practice screen at home and on the last hole of a tournament and you'd be doing the same thing. And the idea of the routine is to focus your mind on your purpose and your process and know that nothing is going to take us away from it. And so. Every day we're playing a game, we are practicing that mental discipline. We're ingraining a habit that we know is going to work under pressure. Exactly. So we're going to look at some putting games and we're going to practice like a pro. Because short putts are a very important part of improving your scoring and your short game, we have three games, the clock game, the star game, and the drawback game, all designed to simulate short putts that you're likely to get on the golf course uh, playing with your friends or in competition. What we want you to focus on when playing these games is seeing if you can learn to give every putt the same equal low level of importance. See if you can determine before you start the game what your thoughts are going to be, what your routine physically and mentally is going to be, and what your process is going to be. Now remember, the process should focus on the routine you're going through and totally get you out of results and keep you from getting distracted by concern with making or missing the putt. That is really what we want you to rehearse every time you play these games. As the games go on, there's a tendency for the pressure to build in terms of wanting to make the putt more and more and that's when you learn to get really good as you go through the round of golf to be able to treat every putt the same. And that's really what we want you to get out of these games. What we have here is the reason tour pros don't miss those key short putts. It's as simple as this right here. It's the clock drill. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to set up four tees three feet from the cup around similar to a clock. One's going to be at 12 o'clock, one's going to be at 3, one at 6, and one at 9. Now this may seem simple, but the key is that the pressure is going to build as you get further into the game. Depending on your handicap, the number of putts that you'll need to sink is different. 
And remember the key is, if you miss, you start over. That's what makes this such a great game. Because this is going to condition you to hit the short putts with the kind of indifference that you need. You're going to really want to try and make that last putt. And you're going to get in your own way a few times and you're going to miss it. And you're going to have to start all over. But that's what's so great about it. You're going to condition yourself to hit each and every putt with the same low level of importance. You'll learn that really quick and your short putting is going to really improve. Now this guy that's demonstrating is a three handicap. He has to go around the circle five times. That's 23 footers in a row. I know that sounds a little daunting, but I promise you if you go through your routine each and every time and treat each putt with the same low level of importance, you're going to fly through this drill and you're going to always have your best chance of making that key pressure putt. The great thing about this game is you're not spending a lot of time analyzing the putt. Hit the putt and just react to the hole. Okay, now we have the star drill. This is another great short putting drill. It's very similar to the clock drill, except we've added in a little more difficulty. We've put a tease at three, four, and five feet. Now, what you have to do here is complete each set of the star, or leg of the star, if you will, and go all the way around the circle. So you have to make a three, a four, and a five footer at each station without missing. At any point if you miss, you have to start over. So the pressure builds. That's the great thing about this. You have to have that pressure putt and there's nothing like having to make that five footer to end this drill. It's a lot of pressure but once you do it you're gonna feel great about yourself and your putting. Now I'll demonstrate at any point if I miss remember I have to start completely over. So I have to make 12 putts in a row without missing. So here's my three footer. Made that one. Again, doing my routine. So I made the four footer. Now I'll do that for each leg of the star and go all the way around without missing. Once you do this, you're going to have a lot of fun challenging yourself, getting better at your short putts. I promise you this will really help you. Our next game is called Drawback. Now this is a great game for your short putting. What you have to do in this game is after every putt that doesn't go in the hole, you've got to draw it back a putter length. Now if you're using a long putter, just draw it back about three feet. That way if you don't hold the putt, you're always putting a three footer. So you're always going to have the short putt. Now challenge yourself with this. You can play with buddies and, and have a one-on-one -on -one match. But we set some benchmarks for you in the game chart. Look at that based on your handicap and play nine holes around the putting green. So I'll demonstrate here the first putt I'm going to hit. Again, I'm trying to hole it, doing my routine. Okay, we didn't hole that one. So now I have to come up and draw it back a putter length from the hole. So I do that. Now I have basically a three footer. So I have to do my routine, read the putt just like I would on the golf course. Trust my routine, I made a two. Now the great thing about this game is there's tons of variations. There's safety drawback where if you, if you, if you hit the, your first putt past the hole in a safety zone equal to the length of your putter, then you don't have to draw it back. Have fun. Make some creations. Create your own games. The point is, is when you mess up and miss the putt, you got to pay for it with another three-footer. Before you know it, you'll be making more of those on the golf course and your scores will go down. All right, here's a great game. It's called the Hole Switch Game. Blake and Greg, two Florida Southern golfers, are going at it here. What they're going to do is they're each going to putt from their spot and try to hold the putt. Once one of them does, they'll switch holes. The first one to five is your winner. Nice putt, Blake. He's up one to nothing. This is a great competitive game. You can throw a little money on the line here. You can rib your friend. There we go. Greg just made it. It's at the same time. 
And what we're going to do here is really get into holding the putt. And you're trying to get to five points before the other guy does. But you're going to putt at the same time and make the putt. There, they, they stay in the same spot. One, if you miss the putt, you stay in the same spot. But once one of you makes it, you move to the other spot. This is a great game for holding putts. There, Greg just hold one and he'll move. Now the score is three to two. Blake holds it. Now it's four to three. Greg hold it at the same time. So now you got a little pressure to make the putt and up. Oh, Blake's your winner. The whole switch game. It's a great game. It's really competitive. Gets you into hole and putts. Thanks for helping us, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Keep working on it. The six foot speed drill is a game we love, particularly when you play really fast greens in competition, where if someone asks you, uh, what do you think this putt does? You think it breaks an inch? You think it breaks two inches? You think it breaks three inches? I always tell people, I don't know, it depends on the speed you're going to hit it. So when you've got big breaking putts on fast greens, it's all about getting your imagination to see a line and a speed that match up. And what we want you to learn to do in this game is see that you can make the putt on three different lines and three different speeds, whichever one you see in your mind. And that's really what we want you to get out of it. It's a great way to develop feel and a great way to develop imagination. What you want to do is get on a breaking putt here. And you want to be about six feet from the hole. That's how I do it. You can be four or five feet, but you want to have a distance where you're going to have to hit a putt three different speeds. That's the goal here. What we're going to do is hit one a, a medium speed that would go in, one a very slow speed that's just going to get to the front of the hole, and then we're going to hit one and take all the break out of it, hit it almost straight, really. But you'll find that when you trust your intuition as you read putts, there's no one right way to hit the putt. And you really refine your intuition with this drill. So what I'm going to do here is when I do it, I have to make all three in a row. Now that's very difficult. You may want to do it where you only have to make one of the three or even two of the three. But challenge yourself here and you're really going to refine your feel and your touch. And the faster the greens are, the better. And the more break the putt has, the better. So again, when I do this drill, I'm, or this game, what I'm going to do is do my routine just like normal. Not caring whether the putt, there you go. I trusted my routine. That was a good speed. Now I'm going to hit one very high. I'm going to take more break and hit it more up the hill and let gravity take over for me. So again, I'm going to do my routine just like before. I want this putt to just barely get to the front of the hole. That's pretty good speed right there. That just barely went in. Now the pressure's on, okay? And that's what's great about these games. I have to make this putt to finish this game. So I'm going to take all the break out and hit this putt very firm. But the pressure's on, but as long as I just trust my routine and not care. Okay, I made all three in a row. That's what's great about this game. It really challenged me, and I had to learn to use my intuition. You use this game regularly, you'll find out that you'll make more of those difficult breaking putts on the course. Trust your intuition and trust your routine. You'll be making more putts. We have two games that are designed for working on your long putts. And remember, on long putts, we always want you to be seeing yourself making the putt and seeing the ball go in the hole. I would say not only do you need to totally trust your instinct and your subconscious will hit the putts at the right speed to make it go the right distance, but I find it's very important for players to never instruct themselves over the ball on how hard to hit it or how easy to hit it. So we don't want you to ever tell yourself, make sure you get it there or don't leave it short. By the time you get over the ball, we want you totally lost in the process and the routine. Behind the ball, we want you to see the ball going in the hole. And with all of our games, we want you to evaluate 
only on whether or not you did your process. We don't evaluate based on whether or not the ball went in the hole. All of your evaluation, if there's any at all, is going to be, did I do my process? Did I honor my commitment to my routine and my process? And did I trust it? And that's what we want to do when we go to the golf course. You get really good at doing that, you're starting to become a really good short game player. Okay, now we've reached the long putting section of the DVD. The key to lag putting is having good touch and feel. What you want to do is be able to lag the ball close. Remember, we're still trying to make the putt, but when it's right up there next to the hole and you can just go up and tap it in, that's the key to eliminating three putts. We've got a game here called the lag putting game, and we've got a safe zone set up three feet behind the hole, and what we're going to do is putt from 15, 25, and 35 feet. We have tees set up, and we're going to putt three balls from each of those tees. We're going to try to get them all in the safe zone. And we're also going to try to make them. So when we do make them, we get a pass for the next level. So we're going to start at 15 feet here. And I'm going to do my routine. Remember, trying to hold the putt. That is the key. So I made that one. I get a pass for one that doesn't end up in the safe zone. Well, I made two. That's good. I keep getting these passes. That's nice. Let's see if I can go for all three. Wow, I made all three. So I got three passes, but that's good. I go back to the next level, continue on till I've made all three in the safe zone from the last tee. You do that, your lag putting is going to get really good. Not only are you going to be making more of those putts, but you're going to eliminate those three putts. Our next game is called the fringe game. What we're trying to do here is roll the balls up to the fringe. That's your mark. You want to try to roll it right up to that fringe. You want to do this from about 35 feet away. The further away you are, the more difficult it is. When you roll one right up to the fringe and it touches it, that's five points. When you get one within one foot, that's three points. When it's within two feet, two points. And finally, if you're outside of that two foot mark, more than that, you only get one point. So the great thing about this is you really refine your touch for those long putts. You'll find that the better your touch gets, the more you'll be making those putts. Because remember, we're trying to make long putts, but you got to have good feel for your speed. And this really makes it where you're not thinking about it. It's just reactionary, like Dr. Rotella talks about. So I'm going to try to roll this right up to that fringe, doing my routine. So that one got, oh, a little by. So I still get three points for that one. That one rolled just not quite there. So I got room for improvement. Another three points for me though. That one rolled right up to the fringe. You keep doing this, your long putting will get so much better because your touch and your feel will get better. Challenge yourself, have fun with it. You'll be making more of those long bombs. And what about like drills, like using, you know, drills to where you got to make a key putt and, and, and you want to give yourself that, that mental edge, uh, you know, do you use some drills like well, that? Well, you know, I prefer to call them games, games. you know, so yeah. they're more fun to do because most people get uptight and anxious right. about their putting and short game chipping. A lot of times I see guys that kind of get nervous, but, you know, I try and make it lighthearted and light you know, fun to do when you when you practice. Right. You know, everybody thinks they have this little thing they can put in a jar and sell it. <laughs> right. If you want to have a good short game, you got to spend the time That's doing right. it. That's right, exactly. We see a lot of guys out here on tour doing drills and games, like, you know, setting up a circle around the hole and putting. Do you use those drills to all, simulate? All the time, yeah. all the time. If you're going to spend time uh, on your short game, in order to get 
focus, like uh, to really do some focus practice, you've got to keep it interesting. You've got to find ways of making, uh, you know, whether that's having a little side bet or having a little game with yourself. Or lucky enough, we've yeah. got a caddy with us all the time. So yeah. they, generally, we're 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 creating some game with them, uh, trying to do something spectacular. But you've got to keep it interesting. We definitely want to see you make a day-to-day -day commitment to these drills. But as you get better and better, first of all, don't hesitate to create your own drills in your own games. And it's okay for you to create your own personal favorites. And the other thing I strongly suggest as you get better and better is take it to a competitive level in the practice area. Go find a friend who's of somewhat similar ability and go out and have contests against a friend that starts making it more like match play or like a competitive round of golf or a tournament. Because the more you expose yourself to competition, the more comfortable you're gonna get with it, the more often you can see yourself doing your mental and physical routine and going through the process in a competitive environment with other people around, uh, the better the transfer to the golf course or tournament play. Now we've come to the 20 minute pre-round practice routine. This is the best way to spend your time before you go play a round of golf. If you're running tight on time, skip the driving range, spend some time here, and you're going to shoot lower scores no matter how your swing feels that day. Now what we've done here is we're going to start out with a short putting drill. This is a, a great way to get your feel and your line. Short putting is very, very important. And we're going to spend five minutes here on short putting. Now, if we accomplish this inside of five minutes, that's great. We've saved a little time. If you haven't accomplished it within five minutes, you're going to move to the next part of the game. But we have to make four putts in succession. We cannot miss. If we miss at any point, we have to start over. So the pressure is building as we get to the last putt. So I'm going to do the first one here, doing my routine just like the regular game. Now I'll continue around the clock until I've made all four. If I miss, I start over. If you haven't done that within five minutes, you've still spent quality time working on your short game. Once I've done that, we're going to move to the next part of the 20 minute routine. Now that we've worked on our short putting and got some good confidence there, we're going to move back from the hole. We're going to leave the same four tees in the configuration they are, but we're going to move back 35 feet from the hole. If you want to go further, it's just going to be more difficult. That's great. We're going to work on our touch, our long putting skills, because we have to have good feel to be able to lag the ball up close. Now, remember, we're trying to make the putt here. That is our purpose. But if we miss, we want to be right up there close. Now, I'm going to try to get all four balls inside that circle. For every ball I make, that means I get a pass for a ball that's outside. I'm going to do my routine, just like always, and try to get all four of these balls inside the circle or in the hole, preferably. Now I've done that. I'll do it till I get all four balls in or I've spent five minutes. Then it's time to move to the next part of the 20 minute pre-round practice routine. Now that we've wrapped up the putting portion of the 20 minute pre-round practice routine, we're gonna move off the green and warm up our wedges for the golf course. We're going to leave the same configuration with the tees in a three-foot circle, and we're going to hit some chips. We're going to hit the four balls we have to get inside that three-foot circle. Now, Dr. Rotella has talked about trying to hold the shot. So what we're going to do, every ball we hold, we get a pass for a ball outside the three-foot circle. Now, I'll demonstrate. I'm going to do my routine just like I would do on the golf course, trying to hold the chip. That was close. I'm going to continue to do that till I get all four balls in that circle, or I've spent five minutes. Remember, our wedges now are ready for the golf course. Okay, we've reached the final part of our 20-minute pre-round practice routine. We're going to work on our pitching 
or our bunker play here. Whatever you feel like you need to get some confidence before you head to the golf course. We're going to use the same four balls and the same four tee configuration that we've used throughout this routine. The purpose of this is to put two of the four balls within the circle or hole one of them or you've spent five minutes on it. So we're going to go to the golf course with some confidence in either our pitching or our bunker play. I'm going to demonstrate pitching here. I'm about 15 steps off the green here and I'm going to do my routine as always trying to hold the shot and go through my full routine. Okay, now once I've done that, I've prepared my pitching or my bunker play for the golf course. And I'm going to score well that day despite how my swing feels. If you've only got 20 minutes before your tee time, you know, oh. these guys are running late. Don't go to the range. If no. you want to shoot a lower score, just spend some time around the green. Go hit say? some little chip and runs right around the green. Get a couple wedges. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, that's so much more productive yeah, than, exactly. than going out there and slapping two or three drivers and, and running to the tee. We just showed you our 20-minute pre-round practice routine. It's the ultimate way to prepare your game for the golf course. The one thing I want you to take away from this DVD series is how important the short game is and also how important it is how you practice. Use any of our drills and games in a practice routine. Challenge yourself. You're going to have some fun practicing. And I guarantee you, the next time you face that key putt in a tournament or just in any round of golf, you're going to look forward to the challenge because you're going to be able to do it with great regularity. Have some fun with this. You'll get better and you'll practice like a pro.